Hi folks, let's machine some awards medals. This is for the Zanesville Survivor Challenge. And if you've ever heard anything about Zanesville, it's probably either that we used to be the pottery capital of the world or that we have a Y bridge. So Alex took the lead on this project. Some good examples of job shop workflow in both fixturing and Fusion 360 cam. Let's dive in. We decided to make these out of half inch plate for two reasons. Number one, we had the material on hand. And number two, it lends itself to using the super glue method to make them six at a time. Starting off by ramping down the outside profile of our shape, we have found when it comes to a slotting style tool path that a ramp technique can work quite well when you set the maximum step down of each ramp to 10% of the tool's diameter. Chip evacuation is critical and it's one of those examples where I found flood coolant to be superior to the fog buster because the fog buster nozzle just can't stay aimed at the curves as it rotates around all directions. Next up, facing the part off. So why are we using a quarter inch tool to face this part off? Shouldn't we just use a face mill or a fly cutter? Card here to the video on 10 different ways to face the part. Two benefits here. Number one, we're gonna go sand these parts afterward. Using the smaller tool minimizes any tram error in the machine, makes it much easier to sand your part to a really nice finish. The second reason was minimizing the number of tools that we use. Alex set this up while he was doing some other work. So the fewer tools we need, the better off we are. Next up, slotting this 1 8 inch slot for the ribbon. So this is tricky, or rather this is an easy place to break a tool. It's a 1 8 inch slot that's 3 8 of an inch thick, so only three times diameter. Nevertheless, we want to stack the deck in our favor. So we're using the 2D slot toolpath that forces Fusion to stay on the center line of the cut. Works great. Same step down, passes, maximum roughing step down we're doing. 10% of the tool diameter. You can type that in yourself, or if you right click, edit expression, you can see tool diameter times 0.1. Fusion has a relatively new update that's great where if you're not sure what formula to use, just start typing tool, and now you get a list, underscore D, I get diameter times 0.1. A really nice, useful feature. And we're slowing down our feed rate to 1,000th of an inch feed per tooth. That does two things. One, less tool pressure. Number two, smaller chips. So the smaller those chips are, the easier it is for the flood coolant to flush them out. So how do you program multiple parts when they're laid out on a sheet like this? Use a component pattern. This is an awesome feature in Fusion. What it lets you do is we program one of these parts. We then, in the design side, right click, copy. Now I'll right click You've got two options. You can paste or paste new. The difference is paste pastes another instance of that component, but it's still linked back. So if we made a change on our original component, like the engraving or the text, that change would flow through. That's the right way here because I want six identical components. Paste new would paste it as a new component with no link back to the original. I'll do paste. I'll move it over here for the sake of this example. Click OK. We've programmed the ramp toolpath on our original part. Right click, add to new pattern. And what I love about this is it kind of breaks the mold of rigid parametric CAD where you have to have things in structured patterns and very much ordered. Switch it to component pattern. The source, our original, the target, already found it. In this case, it found all of them because we have automatic on. Let's say I want to just program it on this individual one. Just turn off automatic. And under targets, I can click this one or say this one and this one. I love this. Very useful tool for thinking about manufacturing workflows in production and fixturing. We then tried two different ways to finish these metals up. One of them failed. So Alex tried to use a hybrid fixture plus super glue to do the majority of the work on this interior pocket. So super glue is all about the amount of surface area you have. Card here to our vice torque video test where we start to talk about that. The rule of thumb that I follow is if you have a, an approximately six inch square part or 36 square inches or approximately 150 by 150 millimeters, that's going to be sufficient surface area for the super glue technique to have a secure work holding, especially on non-ferrous parts. 
Smaller than that gets tricky, and in this case, if I click once on that face, Fusion tells me it's only 6.6 .6 square inches, or about one-fifth of my mental rule of thumb. But Alex wasn't just relying on superglue. He also had modeled in this fixture, which did two things. It located each part after he flipped it to hold the six in place, and it would have given it some XY stability. So this is a good lesson. We've done some testing where if you have a super glue part and you put a single screw or strap clamp on there, that extra tool works as a force multiplier that really compounds the work holding power of the super glue. Here, it wasn't enough. It actually did work for the first six, but Alex wanted something he could walk away from. This didn't pass the test. So on to soft jaws. Soft jaws are awesome, and if you're a machinist that's heard about them but has never made them, I encourage you to give them a shot. Card here to a video where we walk through that workflow, things to think about when you're making a set of soft jaws. We buy them from Monster Jaws in 10 packs, but we buy the reversible style, so they, instead of having a round center slot, it has an oval slot. This lets us use both the top and the bottom, so we usually get two setups out of the same set of soft jaws, which halves the cost. But seriously, I remember years ago being intimidated by soft jaws. They are great. But the problem with soft jaws is they're one at a time. Not the end of the world. We only had to make 18 of these. But I commend Alex because he was really trying to focus on how can I batch these up and run them six at a time. And if we ever did these again, I know we could make this work as a combined technique. And what I would do is increase the physical clamping of this fixture plate by either recessing a pocket for this whole piece to sit inside of. That's going to massively increase the XY stability of that part combined with super glue or do that along with something like the Mighty Bite fixture clamps that pivot on an eccentric screw. This alone may mean you don't need super glue. I would probably still stack the deck in our favor, at least on the first few of using a combined super glue with the fixture clamp. After they were done though, Alex did three different finishing techniques to differentiate first, second, and third place. He did a great job on that, and the local Boy Scout group and the event organizers were super happy to have a custom-made medal for the event. We'll have the CAD file up, so you feel free to poke through it on your own over here on the NYC CNC website. Otherwise, folks, hope you learned something. Take care. See you soon.